Probably the second worst feeling is whenever somebody wastes your time because you can get money back. You know what I'm saying? You can get that back, but you can't get your time back. But the number one worst feeling is was whenever you realize you're the one who allowed it. You're the one who allowed it. And by allowed it, what I mean is, matter of fact, let me start this with a question. How many of y'all, put I down in the chat, how many of y'all have had things fall out with a person and then you realize you the one that missed all of the red flags. They've been showing them same red flags since day one and you kept looking through them, looking over them, looking around them like they didn't exist, painting them green. And now that they don't waste your time for the last time, you sitting there and got nobody to blame but yourself. Put I down in the chat if that's ever been you. Ain't nothing new that they doing. The exact same thing they was doing before, they kept doing, it just got worse and worse and worse. You know, you gave them an inch, they took a marathon. And so you ain't got nobody really to blame but yourself for allowing it to happen at this point. Put I down in the chat if that's ever been you. I just did a free masterclass, a new one by the way, called How to Stop Being His Internship and Finally Get Your Blessing. Ain't nobody ever seen this one by the way, it was absolutely free, it's pinned down in the comments. But afterwards, if y'all ever been on one of my masterclasses, you know we do a, a Q&A and and a young lady asked like, D, how can I guarantee that I'm never gonna waste my time again? I'm gonna give y'all the very unsexy answer and that's that you cannot guarantee anything, anything to do with dating, relationships, et cetera, because you're dealing with human beings is a risk, but there are things you can do to reduce your chances of getting your time wasted. And that's one of those things is recognizing the red flags and acting accordingly out the gate. Not six months down the road, not six years down the road. But you got to know there are some red flags that will present themselves in the first two weeks on the first date. One of those things that lets you know that you absolutely need to cut him off early on in the talking stage is if he tests you. Y'all ever had a man test you? Not like jokingly, you know some guys got a sense of humor. I'm talking about like test you, like oh, you know, I told you I didn't have my wallet because I wanted to see if you was gonna pay, see if you was gonna judge me or something. I wanted to tell you I didn't like that, that, that dress that you had. I wanted to show up late. I wanted to see what you was gonna do. And they were dead serious? I know dating is for collecting data. I've been saying that for years. It became a popular catchphrase nowadays. However, if a man is not letting things unravel and show themselves organically, he's positioning himself as like the puppeteer of y'all's dynamic. He's essentially saying he's your superior and it's up to you to prove yourself, jump through hoops in order to prove yourself to him. At best, you're dealing with an insecure man. Most likely you're dealing with a controlling, manipulative man. If a man starts out the gate in the first two weeks testing you, he's trying to let you know your role. It's kind of like when a man says, what do you bring to the table? Of course, the sentiment is kind of fair, but we all know the undertone of that is prove to me why you're worthy of my time. And I don't know if you like being with people like that, but I would say at some point that's going to be a regret that you gave him any of your time. So. That's one red flag. If he starts out in the first couple weeks on the first date testing you in any way and it's not just out of humor or just, you know, kick he can, he's really testing you, big red flag. Cut it off. Another way that you need to know you need to cut that off early is if he criticizes you. In the first two weeks, now we just saying early in the talking stage, y'all don't even know each other. If he starts off criticizing you, granted, we talking outside of extreme stuff. You know, you ain't you ain't abusing your kids or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? You ain't trying to steal something out of a, a Macy's. Like, really, just criticizes you. Man, you got to do that. Man, why are you outside tonight? Why are you going to do that? Any type of criticism should not should be waiting for when he at least knows you. Now, why do I say this? Is it because as a woman, you can do no wrong and a man can't speak up and say, no, 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 no. In the first two weeks, it's not time for criticism. It's time for curiosity. He don't know nothing about you. Y'all don't, y'all, y'all don't even know each other's favorite color, middle name. Y'all know nothing about each other. So any type of criticism comes from a closed mind. And he's already trying to shape you to his standard of how he sees and does things. He's already letting you know there's no space for how you authentically come. I automatically, if I don't understand it, I'm going to attack it in the form of some type of subtle insult or joke. Y'all know them jokes that got a little truth in the, in, in the middle of it somewhere? There should be no room for criticism in the first two weeks. Now he can express his boundaries. He can say what he's not comfortable with. Absolutely, a man should be able to express what he likes and dislikes. But the moment he comes for you or criticizes you, expect that to, to continue tenfold down in a relationship. That's, that's not just freedom of speech or speaking his mind or, you know, masculinity. 
That's a man who's likely got negative energy and going to deteriorate you over time. Red flag. One, that's one of the signs you got to cut that off early on. First two weeks, he should have nothing but questions to, so he can better understand you and get an idea of you and be accepting of you. Not so he can already try to chip away at what you're presenting to him. Third way that you know you need to cut him off is if he badmouths his ex. I'm talking, again, this is early on. I do think in the course of a relationship, y'all can be each other's safe space. You and he can both express some unsavory things about your exes. Of course, you don't, you don't want that to go too far, but y'all never have no time for each other. But if there's something bad that his ex has done, he should be able to speak with that or speak about that with you. But if it's in the first two weeks, say he mentioned something, you know, that shouldn't have happened, that did happen. Maybe she took the kids from him, didn't let him see him. And he can't quickly come back to y'all's time and y'all's space and protect that. It's not that he's a bad guy or just trying to beat her down and, you know, shame her or smear campaign her. But that's an open wound. That case is still open. That may be just too touchy for you to go into right now. And I'm speaking best case scenario. Because, of course, when a man badmouths his ex, y'all know sometimes he already put you through the exact same thing. But in the first two weeks, there's so much to get to know about each other. On the first date, there's so much that he doesn't know about you. Very little should be taking up the time that y'all are spending with each other. Now, of course, we like consistency. And over the time of a relationship, you still want to have that time just for y'all. But once you have like the ground, the basis, the foundation kind of built... You can, you can integrate more of external life into y'all's life together. But in that first week or two, y'all on a conversation, he don't even know you. Why is his mind spiraling down memory lane about his ex? Why? Because his heart is still there too. Another sign you need to cut him off early on in the dating phase is if you spent more, say after them first two weeks, right? We, we, we gonna go all the way after the first two weeks and you're still not attracted to him. Y'all stop... Stop getting guilted into dealing with these dudes who don't like your fire. Stop getting morally pressured into entertaining men that you're just not attracted to. If you don't want a five foot three king, you don't want a five foot three king. It don't mean you superficial and God ain't going to bless you and you're going to die alone or whatever. I'd rather I'd rather you spend your life alone because I want to be careful about the words that I use. I'd rather you spend your life alone than to spend your life miserable or spend your life unfulfilled or spend your life wondering what if, what if I didn't listen to society standards and the red pill moving and Kevin Sand, whoever else that told me that I'm trash because I don't want a man that I'm not attracted to. What if? No, if you're not attracted to that man, and I say two weeks because sometimes for a woman, at least I believe this, you can't even get attracted to a man that you don't know at all. It takes his intelligence being on display. It takes some of his character and values being on display. It takes some level of familiarity in order for you to even feel drawn to a man. Like you might be able to identify he's an attractive man, but not actually be attracted unless you know him. So two weeks, plenty of time to break through that ice. If after two weeks, you're still not attracted, you don't need to continue entertaining that, trying to force something so you can feel like a good woman for not passing up on a good man. Not every good man is your man or the right man for you. And the same thing goes vice versa. So you're a beautiful woman probably, but you ain't going to be attractive to everybody and that's fine. Get somebody that's for you and stop listening to these folks. And the last one, and this is really important, really important. Actually, I don't think I've heard anybody say this one before, but. The last way that you know you should cut him off early, I'm talking about in the talking stages, is if he has someone to talk to every night at the exact same time. If that, if, if every time you FaceTime him, 7.30, 8 o'clock, and you notice that a call comes through at 9 o'clock, 9.15, anytime in the same hour window, for a week straight, two weeks straight, that man has no room in his life for you. Y'all be asking the question, are you single? Y'all need to be assessing whether or not there's room in that man's life for you. A man could be single and still have no room for you. Hello, somebody. He could be single and have such a rotation and such serious considerations where there's no room for you because you take up room. You're not somebody that's going to get crumbs and be cool. You know, you're not somebody that's going to get a text message every two or three days and be straight and still give him access. You, you, are main, you are main and only woman energy, period. So when a man, I'm, I'm giving you one sound, really anything that signals this man has uh, a habit with a woman. 
he already has a, a connection ritual in a sense with a woman. Every time I'm, I'm on the phone and you don't hear from him no more the rest of the night, that man, or he don't have no room. There's no room in his life. Even if he's technically single, because you'll have a lot of guys who will do that. They will keep the relationship label off the table while they maintain relationship like things. But here's the problem with that. Of course, we say, well, that's his prerogative, whatever, whatever. I went out. Maybe you feel like you want to compete. Cool. But do know, even though he doesn't call it a relationship with that lady, that young lady that he talks to at the exact same time every night, he ends his night with and she will not let him get distracted while they're on FaceTime to talk to you. It's going to hurt just like if he left the relationship to leave her so more than likely you're developing feelings into something that's already spoken for that's already spoken for and you're setting yourself up to be in an internship a lot of people are in internships they think they're in relationships and this is i'm so passionate about this because we just went in on my master class so some of y'all are not on my email list and you didn't get invited brand new master class is out right now free master class by the way called how to stop being his internship this is for anybody that's ever been in a relationship with a man and you were give, give, giving, not getting what you were supposed to get. But then once y'all broke up, he's now giving all of this net to the next woman that you was asking for. I don't know how many of y'all been in that situation, but if you have been and you don't want to repeat that pattern, or if you're in a relationship now and you're wondering if you're really in that stagnant situation where he's actually going to take everything that you're trying to bring out of him and give it to another woman, I have a free masterclass to help you stop that. It's pinned down in the comments, also in the caption when you back out. How to stop being this internship and finally receive your blessing. How to recognize when the guy's going to do that. How to recognize the signs that you're already in that. And so much more. Again, it's absolutely free. Set the link in the comments. But back to what I was saying. When that man has no room for you, there's no, no place for you to sit there and try to barge your way in. This is how men work. When we see something we want, we'll do the moving around. We'll do the protecting of that space. We'll carve out things that need to be carved out. We'll sacrifice the ugly and, and toxic parts of ourselves to make sure that you're good and make sure that you're safe and secure, to make sure that we have time with you. And if you're in that dynamic where you got to compete your way into a man's life, expect the competition to continue even once you are in his life. He doesn't have an investment mentality at that point. He has he has a competition, a, a, a threes, a crowd. He, he has that type of mindset, two completely different thought processes. And so if you volunteer your time to be wasted because you just felt like ignoring those red flags, soon as you saw something you like, you went and saw all these flags, you just threw a bucket of green paint on it and said, you're going to ride out, you're going to regret it. Red flags that go ignored turn into regrets later on down the road. But... Those are just my thoughts. I'm your internet brother trying to look out for you. And if you got any value from this, show me by hitting the share button. I don't need you to pay me nothing. I just want you to share, pay it forward to somebody on your timeline so they can be blessed just like you got blessed. And if you want to make sure that you do not get into an internship where you equip a man to be the knight in white shining armor for somebody else, click the link down in the comments. For about an hour, I dropped gems on how to make sure that doesn't become you and you become the one that men are pursuing and chasing after to give their all to. Again, that link is pinned down in the comments by my page right here. Click that link, get access to the free masterclass. It's also in the caption whenever you back out. Holla at y'all, y'all be good.